Hi, book friends. I'm Erin, and this is Erin Go Read. This is part one of my February wrap up. Now, February is a shorter month. January seemed to linger on forever. Um, I did a lot of just laying around and, and reading and basically um, not adulting, not doing the things that I should have been doing in January. And I've been a bit been and I've been a bit more proactive in February. So I don't think my reading my book total number is going to be quite as impressive in January, but I'm totally okay with that. So, so far I have read six books this month. Two of those were primarily via audiobook and one of those was, is the read I've been reading with my husband and we started that probably six weeks ago or so. Book one was primarily on audiobook but I finished up the last 40 pages or so uh, in the physical book because I was, I was done driving for the day and I wanted to find out uh, the end and that is Jane Harper's Forces of Nature. So this is book two in the Aaron Falk crime series. So this takes place in Australia as this series does. Jane Harper is an Australian author. And Aaron Harper's, uh, not Aaron Harper, Aaron Falk, um, our investigator, his job as an investigator has to do with financial crimes. And one of the witnesses to a crime that he and his partner are investigating um, is lost on like a company retreat camp out kind of thing and so he and his partner become involved in in the the search for this missing woman on this treat retreat the men go off on their own and they have their own camp and they have their own little like journey and then the women do their own thing and so the women come back and one is missing and the others are like bruised and battered and they, they show up late. So we have the dynamics of what happened among the actual group. There's a pair of sisters among the, the group of women. And then is there any connection to what was going on with the men? And uh, I just have a really um, fun time reading her books. The first book was more, had to do more with Aaron because it, it, it um, Aaron personally, because it, took place in his hometown. He goes back to his hometown and there's some history involved um, related to the crime that he ends up being involved uh, solving. That was in the dry. And in Forces of Nature, it has nothing to do with his hometown. So there's less kind of of Aaron's personal life, but you still get there. And particularly through conversation and interna interaction with his partner, um, you you get a little bit deeper into his character. So um, the next book is out. I can't think of the name of it right now, but it's out in hardback. And I think I'm probably gonna wait until it comes out in paperback. I just like all my books to be like the same editions. Um, and I have plenty to read until um, the next book comes out. Next up is The Night Tiger by Yang Si Chu. This was my book of the month choice for January, 2019. This was really fun. So. We follow two main characters, um, uh, Ren, a young boy who's a houseboy, and he has been charged with the task by his, his uh, on the deathbed, his former master char um, gives him the task to find his, his severed finger, uh, reunite it with his body within 49 days of his death so that his body can be whole. Um, and I suppose his, his soul um, complete and not, and not restless. And then we follow, oh, what's the female's name? And our female main character is Ji Lin, and she's a dressmaker's apprentice who's kind of moonlighting at a dance hall in order to pay off her mother's mahjong debts. And she comes across this severed finger. And so it is the story of Ren and Ji Lin as they both kind of deal with um, their tasks and we have some kind of um, mysticism and mystery and um, uh, what's the word? Uh, forbidden love, uh, forbidden love, um, 
and just beautiful prose and I I didn't want to stop reading this book. I kind of went through it slowly because I was trying to savor it. So I'm really excited to get more of Yangtze Chu in the future and I'm really happy that I read this book. Next up we have Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. This was my first Kate Atkinson. Um, this guy is pretty chunky. Um, this one is 525 pages in my edition and I listened to this primarily on audiobook so that it was around like 17, 18 hours. I think I was listening it to at 1.5 speed so it didn't take quite as long and then occasionally I would jump into the physical book and read a little bit from the physical book. Um, I would say that because the kind of the premise of the story is literally life after life. So our main character, I'm so bad with character names. What is her name? Ursula. Ursula, um, the first time she's born, things don't go too well. Her, the cord is wrapped around, the umbilical cord is wrapped around her neck, and she dies. So she has just moments um, uh, in this life. The next time around, the doctor is able to make it. Um, it through the snowstorm. The doctor was able to be there and save her from the cord being wrapped around her neck. And we have multiple iterations of her life, and they eventually span much longer uh they eventually span much longer spaces of time and because of that sometimes um it can be a little bit tricky when you're just listening to the audiobook and figuring out kind of where you are when you are all that so it was helpful to have the physical book to kind of reference sometimes um just to kind of remind me of where I was or what this character was or whatever. It was really neat that, um, so as Ursula is living like these multiple lives, she would start to have like premonitions or just like feelings that like, I don't think we should do this. Um, and, um, you know, people kind of thought she was crazy. Nobody knew why this would ha was happening. And so she kept having like this deja vu feeling and then so that can help to um, ultimately change the outcome and there were a few times in the book and I don't know if this was just me or if this was intended I think this was intended where you would hear something and like I'm pretty sure the same words had been spoken by a different character in a different life and so you as the reader or the listener you have this kind of deja vu experience yourself so that was kind of fun. I could see how it could be repetitive. Um, it kind of is repetitive in parts, but it's different enough that it's not like you're reading the same thing over and over again. So I really enjoyed it and I would definitely recommend it. Um, Kate, Atkin Kate Atkinson's writing I think is very easy to read. Um, it's not, it doesn't require like a high reading level. It is literature fiction. It is literary fiction, but um, but I think it's completely accessible and it, um, you know, you could call this, it's historical fiction. It takes place around the time of, let's see, she, she's born in 1910 and then it spans um, past World War II. Um, and so I think it, end, it ends up like in the 70s, um, I want to say. 1967 is the last specific time th that I remember um, because um, you're, you're hearing dates all the time to help kind of uh, orient you to when and where you are. So I highly recommend Kate Atkinson's Life After Life. There's a companion book to go along with Life After Life and that is A God in Ruins. So this isn't a sequel necessarily, but it follows Ursula's younger brother, Teddy, who is one of my favorite characters from Life After Life. And it doesn't follow the same um, Life After Life uh, reincarnation kind of um, structure. I think it's just a, a standard narrative. Um, so I'm interested to read a Kate Atkinson that doesn't have kind of a um, kitschy uh, format to it. That's just a straight narrative. So even though I have this TBR shelf and these books that I have intentions to read and would like to read for the month, um, plenty of books that I own. I still find myself from time to time wandering into the library just to see what's there, I check out books, and then my TBR is even more expansive, and now I have books that have an actual deadline. I can always renew things, but
but um, I ended up picking up this novella, Morning, by Eduardo Halfon. This uh, Eduardo Halfon is Guatemalan, and he, the character in the story is Eduardo Halfon. This is fiction, but I believe it's uh, semi autobiographical, perhaps. He is a Guatemalan Jew who ends up living in the American South at a certain point. We kind of travel all over the world, um, France, Italy. Uh, he's from Guatemala, so I think we have some heart like reminiscing of conversations that occurred in, in Guatemala, um, as well as conversations that occur in the American South. And so ultimately, this is about Eduardo um, kind of uncovering the mystery of how his uncle Solomon died. Um, and it was, uh, it mostly takes place um, through conversations and he's kind of exploring and talking to other people, trying to, to dig into what actually happened. And so I think I read this in two sittings. After I went to the library, I went to a coffee shop and grabbed some coffee and sat down and read about half of it. And then I finished the next half um, I think the next day. And it was just beautiful writing and simple, but deep and just lovely. So I don't know why even the, you know, the title Morning, I don't know why this caught my eye at all, but um, I like reading translated fiction, like reading from other people's perspectives. And so, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sorry I picked it up. I enjoyed this one. Last up, just finished today is Pierce Brown's Golden Sun. This is book two in the Red Rising trilogy by Pierce Brown. This is the book that my husband and I have been reading together and we will be starting book three, Morning Star, probably tomorrow afternoon. So I think that, so this is book two in a trilogy and I know Iron Gold has come out. I think, I don't know that it's technically like the, it's the fourth, Wait, I'm busy, buddy. Iron Gold is the fourth book, but I think it almost starts off like a new series. I'm not exactly sure because I haven't read it and I haven't read Morning Star yet. But at the time that this was written, it was book two in the trilogy, at least. And I, th I think that it has in common what many middle books in a trilogy have. I'm thinking of, of uh, The Two Towers and The Lord of the Rings trilogy. Even the Sorcerer's, uh, or the, I mean the Chamber of Secrets in Harry Potter, where you have book one kind of sets up the world and the characters and the gist of where the story is going. And then book two is kind of um, like the journey. And so like in the Two Towers, like most of the book is just the, the separate kind of um, groupings of the fellowship just journeying along and then and then they encounter adventure and things along the way and this was almost like that like in a political sense so the first book takes place um on mars and mostly at like a training institute and so you almost get that like boarding school kind of kind of feel which i always like um golden sun takes place after the training at the institute and I feel like it was kind of like the journey to what the destination will be in Morning Star. Um, that being said, it was still really entertaining and really good. So um, I think if I was reading this more just by myself and reading in larger chunks at a time, um, and sometimes when I'm reading with my husband, there are several days in between us getting to read it just based on our, our schedule and what's going on. Also, I'm reading it out loud. So, you know, reading 30 pages out loud is kind of a lot, but reading 30 pages just sitting down by yourself isn't that much. So today I read like 45 pages out loud and my voice was pretty much wrecked by the end. And the only reason I continued on was because we were almost done with the book. So I, I pushed on. Um, but still really enjoyed this book. My husband really enjoyed it. And um, we are looking forward to uh, getting to Morningstar. Also, the title Golden Sun, every time I read it, see it, I keep having Soundgarden's Black Hole Sun suck in my head. So he and I keep singing that together. <laughs> I won't sing for you. 
I almost forgot because I don't have a physical copy of it. I also listened on audiobook for Black History Month to James Baldwin's Giovanni's Room. Um, this was the first James Baldwin I had read. I'm glad I have now read it. I enjoyed it. Um, it's not totally my cup of tea, but I can see why it's really an important uh, piece of literature and I'm looking forward to reading more James Baldwin. Um, his book, Another Country, is on the PBS Great American Read, so I will be getting to that eventually. So that's part one of my February wrap-up. Those are the first six books that I have completed reading for the month of February. I will have a part two where I will go into detail in uh, Red Sister by Mark Lawrence, Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, Beloved by Toni Morrison, and possibly The Lonesome Bodybuilder, which is a short story collection. Um, I may or may not finish that in February. That's kind of the beauty of a short story collection, is that you can kind of um, take it in bits and pieces. Um, and I don't feel as much of a rush to, in order to get it finished. So I'm really enjoying what I'm reading. Um, and I have about less than a week left to finish those last books. And I can't imagine that another book is going to sneak in there. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Have you read any of these books? Are you thinking of reading any of these books based on my recommendations? If you like what you see here, click that subscribe button. See you around the tubes.